Hello friends, uh, welcome to the today's lecture. In, uh, in this lecture, we will discuss the uh, Proudhon first theorem. Uh, we have discussed in uh, say uh, previous lectures. So, we will uh, discuss some examples and Proudhon second theorem and third theorem. In the case when uh, Proudhon determinant is equal to 0, it means that the uh, lambda uh, is a root of Proudhon determinant. So, if you uh, remember, if we recall uh, in previous classes we have discussed that the Proudhon equation y x equal to f of x plus lambda k x t y t dt and here we uh, assuming that f of x and k x t are integrable has a unique solution y x equal to f of x plus lambda gamma x t lambda f t dt where gamma x t lambda is denote, uh, uh, is known as resolvent kernel and it can be uh, found as a ratio of two uh, determinant dx t lambda divided by d lambda. Here uh, d lambda is the Froudhon determinant and dx t lambda is the uh, Froudhon minor corresponding to d lambda and here both dx t lambda and d lambda are uh, entire function and it is defined by uh, we will see the, what is the, how it is defined and in this way this gamma x t lambda is a meromorphic function of the complex variable lambda and d x t lambda and d lambda is defined by the following infinite series d x t lambda is given by this and d lambda is this and where this symbol k x 1 to x m x 1 to x m is uh, defined by uh, equation number 38. So, <coughs> and we can say that in particular if the uh, homogeneous part that is uh, your f of x is simply 0 then y x will have only a trivial solution. So, it means that if you know how to find out d f x t lambda and d lambda then we can write down our solution given in terms of 30 of 34 and uh, we have seen in uh, previous lectures that how to find out this expression d x t lambda and d lambda. So, in today's lecture we will first uh, discuss the uniqueness property of the solution and then we will see certain example based on the uh, theory presented here. So, to look at the um, uh, uniqueness, we know that our solution of this uh, Froudhon equation that is y of x equal to f of x plus um, you can say that it is a to b k of x t y t d t is the solution is given as y of x is equal to f of x plus a to b gamma x t lambda and f of t dt. So, we uh, we have shown that the solution of this can be written in terms of resolvent kernel and given by this uh, equation. Now, if I uh, assume that suppose we have another solution that is say y 1 x which is also satisfying the uh, equation number 39 means we uh, not only y is a solution suppose we have another solution call it y 1 which also satisfy the same equation then we try to show that this y 1 is nothing but this y. So, it means that here we are assuming that y 1 is uh, another solution of uh, our Froudhon equation that is y 1 s equal to f of s plus lambda k s t y 1 t d t. So, what we try to show here we try to show that this y 1 is nothing but y of uh, s. So, here we just multiply the resolvent uh, kernel gamma x x lambda and then you can integrate with respect to d of s. So, we just multiply this equation number 39 by gamma x s lambda. So, when you multiply here this f s gamma x x s lambda f of s d s plus lambda uh, double integration gamma x x lambda k s t y uh, k s t y 1 t d t. Now, what we try to do here once we multiply this then we have this gamma, uh, gamma x s lambda your uh, y 1 s d of s integration with respect to d of s equal to this uh, gamma x s lambda and uh, f of s d of s plus lambda and you can uh, put the limit all a to b and a to b here. So, gamma x s lambda and then here we have this part that uh, k of x t uh, k of x t and uh, y y 1 t 
then dt and then ds. So what we try to do here, we try to show that this can be simplified further. So what we try to do here, we just uh, change the order of this uh, integral and we can write this as a to b and here a to b. Now uh, in place of uh, inner integral is with respect to t, now let us once we change the order then uh, in, uh, inner integral is with respect to ds and outer one is dt. When we do this then we can write it here as gamma x s lambda and k of um, x t here, let me here uh, correct this thing, this is s of t. So this is s of t, so k of s of t. Now this y1 t, uh, you can take it out uh, from this integral, so I can write it y1 t like this. So y1 t k of s t ds and then dt and then lambda you can put it here, right. So this uh, is equal to this. Now to find out the value of the inner integral, we will use the um, uh, relation which is known as Fredholm relation satisfied by this uh, resolvent kernel that is gamma xt lambda is equal to k, k of xt plus lambda gamma xs lambda kst ds. Now uh, here this is the uh, thing which, which we are uh, searching for, so this value can be written as gamma xt lambda minus k of xt. So uh, the, this integral can be replaced by the value gamma xt lambda minus k of xt. So using this you can say that this is equal to a to b gamma x s lambda f of s d of s plus here it is a to b you have y1 t and in place of this we are writing gamma xt lambda gamma x t lambda minus k of xt minus k of xt and this is with respect to dt. Now when you simplify this you will get that a to b gamma x s lambda f of s d of s plus a to b y1 t gamma x t lambda dt minus a to b uh, y1 t k of x t dt. Now if you look at this is the value of what? This is the value of this thing gamma uh, a to b gamma x x lambda y1 s ds is equal to this thing. Now if you compare then you can see that this value and the value uh, presented here is same. So these two will cancel each other and what you will get here is the value that this integral minus this integral is equal to 0 or I can write it here that this is what a to b and I, and I can write it like k of x t y1 t d of t is equal to a to b gamma x s lambda and f of s d of s and we already know that y1 satisfy this integral equation this then from here I can find out the value of a to b kx t y1 t dt as uh, from here I can say that this is nothing but y1 x minus f of x divided by this lambda I think lambda is missing here lambda is you please correct that there is a lambda here. So if you correct this this is equal to a to b gamma x s lambda f of s d of s. So this implies that if you simplify this further you will see that this implies that y1 is equal to, so here if you simplify this, this is y1 x is equal to f of x plus lambda times a to b gamma x of s lambda f of s d of s. Now if you see then this value is given by y of x, so you can say that this is nothing but y of x and this says that if we have any solution of this integral equation, it can be written in the form this. So it means that this form is unique, so we can assign 
the uh, name y of x as this. So, if we have any other solution it has to be of this particular form. So, you can say that here this form is unique and our solution is also unique. So, it, it means that by this way whatever solution we are getting that is a unique solution. Okay. So, now once uh, we have the uniqueness then we can start with the problem. Based, uh, so, let us consider the first example which uh, is the find the resolving kernel for the integral equation y of x equal to f of x plus lambda 0 to 1 x of x plus t y t dt. Now, once we have a resolving kernel with us then we can easily find out the solution of this equation. So, here uh, if you look at here equation is what y of x equal to f of x plus lambda times uh, here a is a 0 and b is 1 x of x plus t y of t d of t. So, here what is given is this k of x t is equal to x plus t and a is equal to 0 and b equal to 1. So, what we need to uh, do here we need to if we want to find out the solution we need to find out the resolvent kernel. So, let us first find out the resolvent kernel and resolvent kernel is given by gamma x t lambda is equal to d of x t lambda divided by d of lambda. So, here uh, if you recall then d of x t lambda is defined as this c naught x of t plus summation minus 1 to power m lambda to power m divided by factorial m c m x of t and d lambda is defined as c c naught small c naught plus summation uh, this is m equal to 1 to in infinity. So, m equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to power m lambda to power m divided by factorial m small c m and how to find out this uh, small c naught and c m we have already seen that these are interconnected and these can be found by the following relations. So, here your small c naught small c naught is always 1 and c naught of x of t is given by k of x t and your small c m is given by integral c m minus 1 x comma x d of x whatever be the limit limit is right now it is 0 to 1 here and then uh, this capital c m x t is given as small c m k of x t minus m uh, 0 to 1 uh, this k of x s c m minus 1 s of t d t. Okay. So, with the help of these relations you can find out all these c m uh, c i x t and small c i's and you can put the values uh, of small c m and capital c m to find out d x t lambda and d lambda and then you can find out gamma x t lambda using the uh, uh, series expansion of d x t lambda and d lambda here. So, here to find out <coughs> c naught is already given as 1 c naught x t as x plus t and c m you can find out by the relation 0 to 1 c m minus 1 x of x comma x d of x. So, first thing is that c small c naught and capital C naught is given to you then with the help of this uh, capital C naught x t you can find out the value small c 1 and small c 1 is nothing but 0 to 1 and then c naught x comma x d of x that is 0 to 1 and this is what this is uh, x plus t here. So, it is 2 of x d of x. So, it is nothing but x square by 2 and 0 to 1. So, that is equal to 1. So, small c 1 you can find it like this. So, small c 1 is given by this one and then once we have a small uh, c 1 then we can use the recurrence relation to find out capital C m x of t. So, we can use this formula for m equal to 1. So, m equal to 1 it is c 1 x of t is equal to c 1 k of x of t minus 1 0 to 1 k of x comma s and this is c 0 s of t d t. 
Now everything you know small c1 you know small c1 is just calculated and it is equal to 1 kxt is known to us so it is x plus t minus 0 to 1 k of x s is x plus s and then c naught st is nothing but k, uh, k of st so it is given as s plus t d of s so this is uh, this is small mistake here it is d of s so it is d of s okay okay so you you can calculate this and it is equal to x plus t here minus now we we need to integrate with respect to uh, this thing um, s so you can say that it is uh, 0 to 1 and we can simplify this you can write s as a constant term you can take it out so this i can write it here this is uh, x s plus x of t plus s square plus s t and d of s so you can write it here this as x plus t and you can simplify this is not a very difficult uh, integral and you can write it your thing here so here if we combine the uh, this coefficient of x so you can write it here uh, this s square by 2 x plus t 0 to 1 minus x of t s 0 to 1 plus s cube by 3 and there is a minus sign outside so it is minus here 0 to 1 and if you simplify you will get the value of c1 x of t and it is if you simplify your value of c1 x t is given by this that is 1 by 2 x plus t minus x t minus 1 by 3 so you can simplify you can get that okay so here if you put uh, the value uh, of s equal to 1 you can say that it is half x plus t and this is what it is minus of x of t and minus 1 by 3 so c1 x t you can get it from this and once we have is, is, uh, capital c1 x t you can find out a small c2 0 to 1 c1 xx d of x and you can calculate and it is uh, given by minus 1 by 6 and again you can use the reconciliation given in uh, equation number 45 for m equal to 2 then we can say that c2 x of t is equal to uh, c1 uh, is, uh, small c2 so small c2 is just calculated as that that is minus 1 by 6 so minus 1 by 6 k of xt that is x plus t minus m that is 2 0 to 1 k of xs means x plus s and c1 s t so c1 st you can get it from uh, this equation and you, if you calculate this is coming out to be 0 now as soon as you are getting some c2 some c i x t as 0 then with the help of this recurrence relation and the relation small c m as 0 to 1 c m minus 1 x x d x you can see that as as soon as your c i is 0 then your small c i plus 1 is going to be 0 and here with the help of equation number 45 you can see that that uh, c i capital c i plus 1 is also coming out to be 0. So, in this case as soon as any one of your capital c i x t is 0 then it uh, this infinite series is truncated into a finite series and all others say uh, higher order c i x uh, c i plus 1 x t is nothing but 0. So, in this case it uh, since c 2 x t is 0 so in uh, this implies that capital uh, c3 capital c4 and so on all are simply zero similarly small c3 c4 all are simply vanish and it is equal to zero and in this case your gamma xt lambda <coughs> is is given by dxt lambda which is now reduced to only c0 xt minus lambda times c1 xt this is the value of c1 xt divided by d lambda now d lambda is again c0 minus lambda c1 small c1 is 1 minus uh, lambda is square and c1 is small c1 uh, is uh, c2 you can find out c2 is minus 1 by c so you can write it gamma xt lambda this gamma xt lambda as this uh, let me write it here it may not be clear here so let me write it here so here your uh, small c0 is 1 small c1 is equal to 1 here small c2 is minus 1 by 6 
and capital C naught x of t is equal to k of x t that is uh, x plus t and C 1 x t is coming out to be uh, half of x plus t minus uh, x of t minus 1 by 3 here. So, here with the help of this you can calculate d lambda as C naught minus C 1 lambda plus uh, lambda is square upon 2 C 2 and rest are all zeros right. So, this can be written as 1 minus lambda and this you can keep it minus lambda is square by 12 C 2 is this ok. So, d lambda is given by this and d x t lambda is equal to that is x plus t minus lambda times C 1 x t that is 1 by 2 x plus t minus x of t minus 1 by 3. So, d x t lambda is given by this d lambda is given by this and you can find out gamma x t lambda as the ratio of these two and it is given by this thing gamma x t lambda and once you have once you have your gamma x t lambda then solution you can write it by y of x equal to f of x plus 0 to 1 here in this case it is a a is 0 and b is equal to 1 and gamma x of s lambda f of s ds right. So, resolvent kernel is given to us and you can find out the solution of this problem. So, now uh, let us move to next problem and here also uh, equation is given as y of x equal to 1 plus lambda 0 to pi sin of x plus t y t dt. So, here we want to solve this integral equation f x is given as 1 lambda as 1 a uh, lambda as given as lambda only and a is 0 and b is equal to pi and k of x t is given as sin of x plus t. So, as uh, I point uh, as we pointed out this is small c naught is always 1 and a small uh, uh, a capital c naught x t is k of x t which is already given as sin x plus t here. Now, uh, let us start calculating the coefficient for uh, d lambda and d x t lambda. So, c 1 is equal to 0 to pi c naught x comma x d of x and when you put the value here then uh, it is sin of x plus x d of x and it is nothing but is coming out to be 0. Similarly, now uh, moving on to uh, find out the capital C 1 x t then uh, from the recurrence relation it is C 1 small c 1 k x t minus m m is 1 here 0 to pi k of x s c naught s t d of s. So, here uh, c 1 is coming out to be 0 k of x t is uh, sin of x t. So, 0 times this sin of x t is nothing but 0 minus 0 to pi sin of x plus s sin of s plus t d of s. Here you can use the formula sin a sin b and you can uh, simplify this and you can get our relation like this. So, c 1 x t is basically what? So, c 1 x of t c 1 is 0 into k of x t. So, that is coming out to be 0 minus 1 0 to pi here and sin of x plus s and sin of s plus t d of s is it ok. So, if you so this is nothing but 0 this is 0 simply minus 0 to pi and then you can write it you multiply by 2 and divide it by 2 and this you can write it cos of a minus b. So, that is you can write it a this is and this is b. So, a minus b means x minus t and uh, so uh, plus and here we have cos of x plus s uh, plus s plus t and yeah d of s is it ok. So, uh, this you can simplify and you can check that this is coming out to be minus 1 by 2 pi cos of x minus t. So, you have c 1 of x t as minus 1 by 2 pi of cos of x minus t cos x minus t. So, c 1 x t is and we already have c naught is equal to 1 c 1 uh, x of uh, c naught x of t as sin of x plus t. Now, just now we have calculated a c 1 uh, x of t that is minus 1 by 2 pi cos of x minus t here 
and small c1 we have calculated as 0 then with this help with this c1 you can find out the value c2 and it is coming out to be minus 1 upon 2 pi 0 to uh, pi here and this is uh, c1 x x d of x and that is minus pi by 2 0 to pi and this is what uh, cos of x minus x is what okay so this c1 x comma x is already containing this minus pi by 2 i'm just writing the formula here so cos of x minus x means uh, it is simply so this is nothing but minus pi square by 2 so small c2 is uh, known to us now it is minus pi square by 2 then capital c2 x of t you can get it here small c2 k of x t minus m is 2 here 0 to pi and this is uh, k of x of s c1 x uh, c1 s of t s of t d of s so every, uh, now c2 is known to us c1 is known to us now we can find out and c2 small c2 is minus pi square by 2 and sin of x uh, plus t minus 2 times 0 to pi and this is a sin of x plus s and c1 st is coming out to be here yeah, it is minus 1 by 2 pi so this you can take it out and this is uh, cos of s minus t d of s so you, you just look at here uh, this c2 small c2 is just now we have calculated as minus pi square by 2 and c2 x t we are going to calculate here and it is minus 1 by 2 pi square sin x plus t plus 2 times uh, 0 to pi 1 by 2 pi sin of x plus s cos of s minus t d of s now here you can use the formula sin a cos b and when you can simplify you will see that it is coming out to be 0 please uh, you please find out and show that this is equal to 0 and uh, as uh, we have seen that this c2 xt is 0 capital c2 xt is 0 then uh, with this uh, formula you can say that small c3 is 0 and if when small c3 is 0 capital c2 is 0 you can check from the uh, recurrence relation that your capital c3 is also 0 and hence we can say that all the um, uh, uh, all the c c i plus 1 x of t where i is uh, 2 all are simply vanishing similarly small c 3 c 4 all are simply vanish and you can say that this uh, expression this infinite series is converted into a finite sum similarly the denominator also this infinite series is truncated into a finite sum so you can write it here this as c naught x of t c naught x t is sin x plus t plus uh, lambda times uh, minus lambda times c1 xt so c1 xt is uh, minus 1 by 2 pi, uh, pi cos of x minus t so using this value you can say that it is uh, 1 by 2 pi lambda cos of x minus t and uh, similarly in you know, c2 capital c2 xt and c3 xt all are zero so th there is no uh, other term here and similarly in denominator also this is c0 c1 is coming out to be zero minus lambda square and this is nothing but your value c2 so c2 uh, you can write it here so one uh, so d lambda is basically what let me write it here d lambda is equal to c naught minus uh, lambda c1 plus lambda square upon factorial to c2 so and all others are simply zero so you can put all the value of c naught c1 and c2 and you can see that d lambda is coming out to be 1 minus 1 by 4 pi square lambda square so here also your gamma xt lambda is given by say uh, this uh, this kind of ratio of two finite series and once we have your resolvent kernel uh, uh, calculated then you can find out the solution by putting gamma xt lambda into the equation that is you can write down your solution as y of x equal to f of x plus lambda a to b gamma x t lambda f of s t of s so for this particular problem your f of x is simply 1 and a is equal to 0 and b is equal to pi 
So, you can write it your solution as y of x is equal to 1 plus lambda 0 to pi and gamma x uh, sorry it is uh, S here. So, it, it, it is not t it is S here. So, here you can write it as lambda f s is 1 so d s. So, gamma x s lambda is just now we have calculated uh, like, like this gamma x t lambda is given by this. So, you can cal uh, calculate gamma x s lambda from this. So, you can find out the solution like this and there is one more uh, example example number 3 and here also um, uh, we need to find out the solution of integral equation that is y of x equal to 1 plus uh, 0 to 1 1 minus 3 x t y t dt. So, here f of x is simply 1 lambda is equal to 1 and a is 0 and b is equal to 1 and k x t is given by 1 minus 3 x t. So, as we have done in uh, previous problems here also we find out alternatively small c i and capital C i. So, once uh, c naught is already uh, uh, already given as 1 and capital c naught x t is given in terms of kernel that is k of x t and then we can always use the uh, relation these two relations these two relations are very very important that is small c m is equal to uh, 0 to uh, a to b a to b c m minus 1 x comma x d of x this is very important and next one is c m x t is equal to small c m k of x t minus m times uh, this a to b k of x of s and c m minus 1 s of t d t. So, if you know these two formula you can find out all the uh, coefficients of d x t lambda and d lambda. So, here also I am um, not calculating, but you can say that a small c naught is given to you c 1 is you can calculate from the help of c, capital C naught x t and it is coming out to be 0. Similarly, from the recurrence relation you can find out c 1 x t and you just pl plug in all the values here and you can see that this is coming out to be minus 3 x t plus 3 by 2 x plus t minus 1. So, capital C 1 x t is uh, uh, known to us now then we can calculate small c 2 and small c 2 is from uh, it is equal to 0 to 1 c 1 x comma x d of x and uh, just plugging the value of c 1 x x and you calculate and it is coming out to be minus 1 by 2 and then once we have a small c 2 uh, capital C 1 x t then use the recurrence relation to find out c 2 x t and which is given by small c 2 k x t minus 2 times 0 to 1 k of x s c 1 s t d s just plug in all the values and it is coming out to be 0 and as soon as we are getting one value of say capital c i x comma t as 0 then you can see that from these two recurrence relation this and this you can say that once your c m minus 1 x comma uh, c m minus 1 x comma t is 0 then small c, uh, c m is 0 and from this relation you can see that c m is also 0. So, it means that as soon as your c m minus 1 x comma t is equal to 0 then this implies that c m is equal to 0 and this relation shows that c m x t is equal to 0 and since uh, because of these two relation you can see that all others are also 0 small c m plus 1 and so on all are simply vanishing. So, it means that in this particular case when c m minus 1 x t is 0 then all other higher uh, coefficients are simply vanishing and your infinite series is truncated into finite series. So, here in this case also uh, since c 2 x t is coming out to be 0. So, all other uh, higher order coefficients are simply vanishing. So, gamma x t lambda is given by ratio of 2 finite series and in this case it is coming out to be 2 by 3 4 minus 3 x plus t. Now, with the help of gamma x t lambda you can find out the solution here y of x equal to f of x plus lambda 0 to 1 gamma x t lambda f t dt here. Now, f x is simply 1 lambda is 1 here and you can find out gamma x t lambda f t dt like this. So, when you plug in all the values you can get y of x equal to 8 minus 6 x by 3. So, uh, with the help of um, uh, discussed theory we are able to find out the solution of random integral uh, equation of second kind like this. So, in next uh, uh, lecture uh, we will see the case 
when d lambda is equal to 0 because when uh, if you look at here we have defined gamma x t lambda as the ratio of uh, two infinite series that is um, d x t lambda divided by lambda let me write it here here your solution is what so we 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 have just seen that if we have equation like this y x equal to f of x plus lambda a to b uh, k of x t uh, y t d t then solution in this lecture we have seen that the solution is coming out to be f of x plus a to b gamma x t lambda f of t d t where gamma x t lambda is defined as the ratio of two infinite series given by d x t lambda divided by d lambda. So, it means that this solution is valid only when when this d lambda is non-zero. It means that the lambda which is present here this lambda is a, is not a root of this Schrodinger determinant d lambda. So, it means that if a lambda is such that that d lambda is not equal to 0 then this solution will give you a this expression will give you a unique solution of this Schrodinger integral equation. But what happened when lambda is such that that d lambda is equal to 0 that will uh, that case we are going to discuss in uh, next lecture. So, thank you for listening us we will meet in next lecture thank you.